In the name of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Well, friends, in football parlance, we are at our Lenten halftime. Three weeks down, three more to go. In, litur in liturgical terms, this is called Letary Sunday, and the name actually is derived from the entrance rite for the Catholic Mass, which begins, Rejoice, O Jerusalem. Traditionally, this Sunday, we are given a pass on some of our Lenten austerity, an opportunity to be refreshed with a reminder of the hope of the resurrection and to be renewed as we prepare our hearts and we prepare our lives for the solemnity of Holy Week. So on Ash Wednesday, just three and a half weeks ago, we reflected on the traditional practices of Lent, prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. And I encouraged us to devote ourselves to at least one, if not all of these practices, with the intention of examining our hearts and seeing where we might be invited to reset our lives. And at that time, I also said that this heart examination exercise of Lent is not so God can discover what is in our hearts, because let's face it, God already knows what is in our hearts, but for God to reveal to us those things which are obstacles to our fully living into the gift we have been given, to our fully living into the created, beautiful human being that God created each and every one of us to be. As we pause during this halfway mark, I am wondering, how is your Lent going? How is your Lent going? I just got a thumbs up, so I know one person's having a good Lent. <laughs> what has God revealed for you in the hidden recesses of your life in these past few weeks? I've spoken to some of you, so in addition to the one person who just gave a thumbs up, I know there are some others who have been having an impactful season of discovery and renewal and a renewed desire to live lives worthy of this gift. Others feel a tad guilty that busyness and lack of commitment has made this season feel little different than any other. So for those of you who are feeling like you are falling short of your hopes for this time, I have a little Lenten locker room pep talk. <laughs> don't give up. Seriously, don't. You still have time. No matter when we start, no matter what our first step is, God has already been coming toward us, welcoming us home. On Lateri Sunday, we commit to set our gaze, we recommit to set our gaze upon Christ. Our gospel reading today takes place at the conclusion of Jesus's conversation with Nicodemus. You remember Nicodemus, the Pharisee who comes late at night asking earnest questions? So unfortunately, the lectionary doesn't help us out. I'm sad that they separate these two because it gives us some context if we know that what we heard read out of that beautiful Bible today was what immediately follows this conversation with Nicodemus. And we know in that conversation that Jesus really confounded Nicodemus, and let's face it, many of us as well, with his responses to Nicodemus' questions with things like, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And so after Jesus and Nicodemus have their somewhat confusing, confounding conversation, Jesus shifts from speaking to the one, Nicodemus, to speaking to the many. And the many includes us. Jesus also begins to speak about himself in third person. According to 
And, and the beginning of his monologue begins with what we heard at the beginning of this reading. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him has eternal life. So according to retired Methodist pastor and poet Steve Garnass Holmes, likely this monologue came from the gospel writer John and not directly out of Jesus' mouth. Garnass Holmes says, John says, in love, God gives us Christ, who is like Moses' serpent, a source of healing and hope, a cure for what ails us, what ailed the Israelites in the wilderness was lack of trust in God. For John, it's lack of belief in Jesus. So I know like I'm older than what I'm about to say is true, but I've only been a priest 10 years. But in these 10 years, I can tell you that one of the most common and important concerns that people have come to me with when they are brave enough to put voice around it is they're not sure what they believe or that they believe enough or that they believe the right way. I have wrestled with questions of doubt. Have you? I mean, who hasn't? And we have a partner in our wrestling, Nicodemus. Jesus sees in him a sincere desire to understand what it is about this Jesus guy that is rocking the world around him. Even though he comes in the cover of night, Nicodemus is brave to come at all, to bring his questions to Jesus. If we are afraid to express our questions and our doubts, it does not help that John 3.16, perhaps the most loving scripture there is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. It's inscribed on quarterback's cheeks. It's inscribed on road signs. And yet, it has been used not as the invitation to relationship that it's intended to be, but as a cudgel. The Reverend Warren Thomas Swenson points out that Jesus' challenging response to Nicodemus was not an effort to confound him, but a desire to teach him, to teach him how to grow in his faith. Instead of spoon-feeding answers to Nicodemus, Jesus is inviting Nicodemus to make sense of it for himself, to grow up in his faith. And that takes time. Sometimes it takes a really long time. Jesus is inviting Nicodemus into a relationship. Jesus is inviting all of us into relationship. Jesus often uses parables that are just not easy to understand and have multiple interpretations. Could it be that he is teaching us to slow down and to pay attention so that we can grow in our faith by looking for deeper meanings in our lives? to pay attention to where transformation is happening, the unexpected reconciliation, the daffodils bravely sprouting up from the ground, the wind kissing our face, the forgiveness that comes, the healing that comes. Jesus doesn't spoon feed our answers so we will keep coming back. Keep asking the questions. We keep coming back in our daily faithfulness to our Lenten devotions, hanging out with Christ in prayer, cracking open our Bibles to read and to study, question after question after question taken from our heart to the great heart. 
reaching out with generosity to those in need, even when we are not certain of all of the answers. What, what does it mean to believe in Jesus? What does it mean? Is it the ability to recite with certainty all of the creeds, every single word? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Perhaps what John is trying to tell us today is that it means gazing at Jesus with a heart willing to trust. And if that feels like too much, then perhaps we can pray for the grace to one day be able to trust. For this last half of Lent, I'm going to invite you to try on some trust. Try on some trust. And those places that are hard and dark, offer them up. For this half of Lent, I want us to see where Christ is inviting us into love, to pray for the eyes to see, for the ears to hear, and for the heart to respond to where we are being called to love. How do we know if we are children of darkness or children of light? We look to the fruit of our lives. All of us have dark places and places of light in our hearts. Jesus says, give me the dark stuff. Give it to me. I see it anyway. So trust I can shine my light even in the darkest crevices. You may know this, but Nicodemus shows up twice more in John's gospel. Did you know that? So the next time Nicodemus shows up is when there are folks who are plotting to kill Jesus. And Nicodemus, a Pharisee, bravely defends Jesus in that moment. And the second time, most poignantly and beautifully, is after Jesus has been crucified, Nicodemus with uh, Saint Joseph of Arimathea helps to prepare Jesus' body for his burial. So what does that tell us? We don't know if Jesus ever spoke to Nicodemus again, but we do know, we do know that he, we can glean from those two passages in Scripture that somehow the seed that was planted in Nicodemus' heart and that conversation in the night came to fruition. Jesus has planted seeds that are begging to come to fruition in our hearts as well. And they are coming to fruition in so many beautiful ways. In conclusion, I offer this prayer from poet and pastor Steve Garnass Holmes. Let us pray. God of gentle mercy, your light has come into the world by your words spoken among us and your grace working within us, bring us into your light. May it fill us, transform us, delight us, and guide us. We pray in the name of Christ, our light, who gave himself for us so that we might know your love. Amen. Amen.